Today, I'm going to teach you how to use a little known block called the jigsaw block to generate your own random structures. Ta da! So, to start off with, there's two concepts you need to understand to use jigsaw blocks for yourself rooms and connectors. So, we're going to start with rooms. Now, this command that I'm using right here is in the description, so you can just copy and paste it. It gives you a structure block. Now, structure blocks are how you actually save rooms to physical files that the jigsaw blocks can use. So click inside of the structure block and hit this left button once to go to save mode. And you're going to put your structure name in here. This can be actually anything you want. <laughs> uh, just make sure to stick to numbers, letters, and underscores. So don't use spaces. It's just for the, the technical stuff. Once you have an actual name, we'll say like upstairs one, then go ahead and hit this done button here and then we need to specify the other corner of this structure. Once you've figured out where to put the other corner, and don't worry if you're not exactly sure, you can change it later, um, place a structure block and click this left button until you get to corner. Enter the exact name that you put in the first structure block, so upstairs one, and then hit done. Now back at the first structure block, just go ahead and hit detect and boom, there's a bounding box that you can build inside of. And so you just make whatever structure you want to make and the jigsaw block will be able to access this because this will be saved as an actual file. So I finished building this simple second story walkway. It's just all purple so that it's really obvious where the different rooms end when we use the jigsaw block. Um, but when you're done building, you go back to the structure block, the first structure block, and you hit save. Make sure to hit the save on the right. If you hit the left one, it just clicks through. So we'll go ahead and hit save. And your building is now a physical file. It's also important to note that you can save entities as well. So this is where the jigsaw block will go. We'll, we'll do that part later. But if we just put a cat in here and we name him Billy, we can go into this save thing and go to include entities on. And then when you save, it'll make sure to save Billy. So that's the room half of jigsaw blocks. Now we're going to move on to the connector half. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get a jigsaw block. Again, the command is in the description and pay attention to the fact that this is jigsaw and not jigsaw block. It's uh, easy to get it mixed up. So first thing is you're going to wanna to place a block to, to orient the jigsaw properly, you have to make sure it's placed against the block. If you place it down like this, the arrow goes upward. And you want the arrow to be facing away from your structure here. So normally, you want the jigsaw block to be placed either in the very middle of an odd-numbered structure, or else always in one corner. So like always putting it in the left corner here, putting it in the left corner there. Um, <laughs> Mine is in an even numbered structure to help illustrate some things, the fact that this can rotate either way. But yeah, normally you want it in the middle. So we're going to open it up and we're going to focus on two things because there's a lot of stuff in there. Um, we're going to focus on name and target name. These are the connectors. Now there's some interesting logic you can do with these, but we're going to start off simple. So we're just going to name this walk side. Now this is the same rules as before. You want to stick to letters, underscores, and numbers. So we'll just do walk side because this it literally goes to the side, right? If we wanted to put a bunch more rooms, like say another room right here, it's literally a walkway to the side. So just name it something that you can remember and that makes sense. So we're going to place another jigsaw block directly opposite that one and Again, you would normally want it centered or else always in a certain corner, um, but this time <laughs> it's going to be a little bit offset. So we're going to put in the same name here because we want it to find a walk side jigsaw block. And I'll explain what the individual things do next. So this is where things start to get interesting. Let me explain what each of those things do. Um, let's place a jigsaw block here, make sure it's facing down. Poifect. So when we go into the jigsaw block, we have name and target name. 
name is the connector for this jigsaw block. Target name is what it looks for. It's target. <laughs> it's, it's pretty obvious once you know what it means. It's, it's pretty easy to remember afterwards. Um, so we're going to do something interesting with this jigsaw block. Now, in the case of this one, we want something to find it, but we don't want it to find something else. That might sound confusing, but it's actually not. So if we go to target name, we don't want this walkway to find anything. We want something else to get it. So we're going to remove the target name, and then we are going to set this name to be walk up. So now this jigsaw block will never generate anything else. It can only be found by the orange centerpiece that we made. So an easier way to think about that concept is as an endpoint. It has a name so it can be found, but it has no target name so it can't find anything else. So once the jigsaw blocks get to this specific block right here, this jigsaw block, then everything ends, at least as far as this is concerned. Um, these other jigsaw blocks can keep going as long as they have a target name, which they do. Um, but this one ends. It won't regenerate anything down. It won't try and do anything else. It just stops here. So this is an endpoint. Now, if we wanted to swap this, we totally could. So we could put something only in the target name. And you could think of this as a beginning point. Because it has no name, nothing can find it. But it has a target name, so it can find something else. So beginning point, end point. You see, pretty straightforward. As of now, we've talked about three of the basic connector types. We have the beginning point, the end point, we have the same version, and you can also make it be something else. So if we did like walk up two, maybe. In this case, that doesn't actually have anything connected to it, but um, you can make either of these. This could be a two and this could be not. You can have them be different, and so they can only find a certain thing, and they can only be found as a certain thing, so yeah. And the final option is if you leave both of these blank, you can make it so that it's manual, so after you generate it, you would come over to this structure block and then maybe specify something, whatever, whatever you wanted. <laughs> so yeah, that's a pretty abstract concept, but... Hopefully that makes sense. Beginning and endpoints and the same ones like these are pretty much the main things you're going to be using, so you can not worry too much about the other ones. But before we save this room for the final time, there is one more thing we need to learn about the jigsaw blocks, and that is this option right here, target pool. All right, this is the most advanced part of the tutorial. If you can get the hang of this, you will be just fine. So. Come to this link, uh, Planet Minecraft, and download the data pack here. Make sure and save it. Once it's downloaded, go ahead and extract it at its location. And once it's extracted, copy the Your Title Goes Here folder. It's important that you copy that one. Copy that, and then go to whatever world you want to use it on. So we're using it on tutorial. Hit Edit open world folder and double click data packs and hit paste. Now, if everything went as planned, it should be data packs. Your title goes here, which you can put whatever you want and then data. So if you have all that right, you can head back to Minecraft. And when you're done, just hit save. So this is where things get tricky. Go ahead and click the data folder. And you'll notice that this is all caps and it says namespace. You're going to rename this folder to a name that you pick. Make sure to use lowercase letters and underscores instead of spaces. So we'll just say, I don't know, Talon. It's a pretty simple one. Short and sweet is really the key here. Click into your newly named folder and then double click world gen and template pool. And again, you'll notice it has another name here. Now this is the template pool name. This is going to be different than your namespace and just pick a lowercase name that's pretty simple. So um, I'll just put pool. <laughs> it's a really undescriptive name, but that's okay. And finally, you're going to open pool in any text editor. So you can just hit this edit button. I have a special text editor though. So we'll open it in notepad++. 
<laughs> you can see Pokemobs. So you'll notice that two of the same things are here. So namespace is here and template pool is here. So just make sure and name those to the same thing. So namespace was first, we named that Talon. And then template pool was second, which we named pool. And the very, very, very last step here is to set the location of those files, those physical files that you saved. So you'll remember that our first one was called upstairs one, and we don't actually have a second one. Um, but yeah, this is why you wanted to use lower cases and numbers and underscores is because when you name it in here, if you use other things, it kind of gets weird. And this isn't really a super big deal, but this number right here, this weight, that is how often you want the thing to get picked. So you can change it if you want, or you can just leave them all the same weight. It's really up to you. Just make sure that they're only integers. Oh my goodness, I almost forgot Billy. And actually this is a great opportunity to just show you how to add a second one. So if you copy from this bracket right above weight, all the way to two brackets below element type, just hit copy and then click right after it, comma, enter and paste. And now we have the second one. So now we just put in Billy and then hit save. And it, you know, obviously Billy is a lot more important, so we can make this number much, much bigger. Whoops, <laughs> 100, there we go, and then save. All right, this is a little bit of a optional step, but it is kind of a good thing to check. So on your Minecraft launcher, if you go to settings and check output log, open output log when game starts and then play, it will show you an output log. Here, let me whoop, drag it right over. And it has a bunch of random stuff, which don't worry about reading all of that. Um, all you're looking for there is red text. So when you open your game and it loads the data pack, um, you can actually go right here and see if there is any red text. If there isn't, then you're good to go. That means you did everything correctly. But if you like missed a comma or something, it would show up red here. Now we can finally fill in this top part of the jigsaw block. So just type in your namespace which we made to Talon, that was the first folder, you remember? And then the pool, the target pool, which we called just pool. <laughs> Pretty basic name. And you do that for each of these. So just Talon, or whatever your name is, or uh, namespace, and then pool. Oh, and by the way, I'm pressing control and backspace to like get rid of all of it instantly. Cool little shortcut that works in these jigsaw blocks. And while it's okay for these two to have nothing in them, make sure that the turns into, at the very least, has Minecraft Air. Um, if you are an advanced technical user, you can actually put various other blocks in there. It, for example, in Billy, I have light blue concrete, and you can even you can even do block states if you know what block states are. But we're not going to get into that in this video. So there are two final pieces of information you need to know before you have all the knowledge to use jigsaw blocks. So let's just take a look at the jigsaw block here. And we're going to generate a random structure with this knowledge. So we already know what to put in the pool. That's easy. We know what to make the target name. That's going to be walk side. But what about these two buttons here? Well, levels basically just tells the jigsaw block how many rooms to put in. So we want one room, so we'll just set it to one. Pretty easy. Keep jigsaws also kind of obvious. Like um, if you keep jigsaws on, you can kind of debug a little bit, but we don't really need to debug. So we're just going to turn jigsaws off and then hit generate. Boom, a random room. Wait, let's do it again. Um, you'll notice that none of these settings saved. So these bottom three settings are all manual, which means you have to enter them every time. Um, because it's so powerful. <laughs> Look, it just overrode it. We got the purple room that we worked on and you'll see the jigsaw blocks are all gone, but the ladder's there, the glass is there. And let's do it one more time before we go for the, the, final, the final touch. Oh, look at that. We got one of each type. It's random, but we actually managed to get one of each type. That's kind of amazing. The moment of truth is here. It's time to take the knowledge you have gained and wield it 
and we are going to wield it very far away from anything precious because we're going to go for the full generation. Maximum levels here. Maximum. We're going to turn keep jigsaws off and we're going to generate. This is the moment. You know what all these things do. You know what the target pool does, the name, the target name. You know what turns into does. You know what levels does. You know what keep jigsaws does. You know all this stuff now and we can finally generate the entire dungeon. Boom. Look at that. Knowledge in action. Oh my goodness, there's so many layers to it too. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is what I meant, how it kind of turns around. You sort of want even entrances and stuff, otherwise it'll rotate 90 degrees like this. <laughs> but yeah, like we got multiple levels. Oh, we got a third level even, okay. That's very cool. <laughs> even the cats are randomly generated, that's perfect, oh my word. This is like a proper maze, but you can see how you could use this to generate like a roguelike dungeon or you could generate a variety of houses like depending on how creative you get with the connectors and the rooms. Those are your two keys to creativity and you can just generate all kinds of stuff. Well, that's about it for this tutorial. You now have the power to <laughs> to create something like this, this monstrosity, but hopefully much be more beautiful than this. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's a, it's a very cool block. I don't think a lot of people know about it. So if you uh, find somebody that you think would be interested in this, feel free to share it with them and maybe they could uh, get some good building use out of it. Anyway, that's going to be it from me. I have Minecraft episodes out every Friday and some other variety content every other Saturday. Well, actually, both Saturdays it, it flops, Rocket League and Subnautica. And yeah, so if you're interested in any of that, check it out. But that's, that's all from me. So catch you next time. Later.